Okay, we got a bunch of information explaining the first two episodes of The Bad Batch and some inside information. So I will warn you, if you stay past the intro, I will be talking about spoilers for the first two episodes. I know most of you have watched it already or watched it before clicking on a video that discusses it, but sometimes some people don't think things all the way through. So this is your warning. Please, if you haven't seen the first two episodes, don't watch the rest of this video. It's going to spoil some things for you, and that will break my heart. What's left of it? You're fulfilling your destiny. Okay, really quick, Disney recently got in trouble because apparently they were whitewashing the characters in The Bad Batch. This isn't part of the whole interview thing where they shared more about it. This is just kind of side news, but I wanted to shove it into this video just really quick. So I guess they were making the clones and Kanan look too white. And so Disney came out and said they're going to fix the, the lighting and make it better in future episodes. I don't know if that's going to be corrected as of episode three. And I feel bad for the animators who are probably working overtime trying to fix this. So... Uh, Disney doesn't have to deal with the backlash. I didn't see the backlash for this, but I also don't go to corners of the internet looking for backlash. So I, I don't know. Maybe you saw people freaking out that the clones and Kanan weren't dark enough in The Bad Batch, episode one and two. Well, Kanan was in an episode two, and technically it was Caleb, but you know what I mean. Anyways, let me know if you had a problem with the clones and Kanan not being dark enough. I didn't even think about it. Echo is obviously super, super pale because... That dude got up. Not saying if you're pale, you're effed up. I mean, well, I'm a bad example. Okay, let's move on to some fun reveals for the Bad Batch. First, they explained how and why Crosshair became the one that remained loyal to the Empire while the rest of his squad were traitorous. So we were told, Crosshair's a kind of contrary fellow, so it makes sense when you talk about this group of elite clones and the decisions they make trying to help this young fellow at the beginning of the premiere episode and then deciding to help another youngster at the end of the episode. With Crosshair, it's hard to justify why he would want to be a part of all that with the way that he focuses on his job, so it sort of was a natural thing. It wasn't that difficult to land on him being that guy, to be honest. There's no better villain than one of your own because they know you the best. They know how you operate. They know your strengths and weaknesses. And I think a weakness for the Batch is that he is their brother, so it's not going to be easy for them to go against him. If they come face to face, what would that look like? We explore more in the series about the chips, and what they begin to learn calls into question whether or not Crosshair had a choice. And choice is something that we talked about in the series. I don't want to give too much away, but we do talk about it a bit. Yeah, first, I talked about how exciting it was to see Crosshair go up against them because he does know them so well and he can use that weakness of they don't want to hurt their brother while the chip has messed with his head. And we know that he didn't have a choice. It was just that his genetic modification didn't dampen the chip as much as the other clones of the Bad Batch. Hell, even Omega said that, you know, I know what you're going to do, but I can't be mad at you because you, you don't have a choice. And then once they uh, amplified the chip, it was it was game over for Crosshair. Though, to be completely honest, Crosshair did the right thing. But speaking of Omega, they did talk a bit why she was so important to the series and where her character's going and just why they added her to the Bad Batch. So here's their explanation of Omega. Very early on in this development process, we were talking about how, if we were to make a show about Bad Batch, how do you challenge Bad Batch because they're so good at what they do? We set up that they're these unique soldiers, so obviously this time period gave us an actual challenge because if they're not agreeing with the Empire, what that means for them, but it also felt like what would really throw them off was if they had to do something completely non-military, like raise a child and be the ones responsible for this kid. Once we really landed on that, everything kind of fell into place. It was a way to not only hone in on who Omega is, but also her relationship with the Batch gave us a natural in to get to know who they all are especially through this bond that she has with each of them, and all of them being misfits in this galaxy and questioning their identity and where they belong. It's a fun ride that we go on together. Also, we know that they had a kid in the series because, you know, this show's geared towards kids and they wanted someone they could relate to. I generally don't like kids in my series, but if it means I get more Star Wars shows, I'm, I'm just gonna take it with a smile on my face. 
I know I don't have a smile on my face right now. I'm just a little bit tired. I don't know about you, but it kind of feels like this cutesy thing of all these dads taking care of this little kid and for the first time, like having that responsibility. And it's it's sort of cute. Okay, let's move on to Kanan's slash Caleb's canon getting all fucked up and the new stupid explanation we got for it. I can tell you that that particular sequence we spent the most time on in the pilot, from writing to production to editing to reshooting, because a lot of talk went into how we wanted to portray that pivotal moment with Dave Filoni and with Brad. Everything we did was for a reason, and it might not match 100%, but it's sort of just wanting to honor what existed, but also give another take on it in this story. Yeah, sweet, cool. You could have taken another take on it without just wrecking already established canon. I get it, it's a show, it's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, not that big of a deal. People are dying all over the world from stupid reasons. But you had a storybook, storybook, storyboard group for a reason. And to mess up the canon that bad, come on. Like it just, it was stupid. Okay, lastly, we were promised a lot of fun cameos, but they aren't going to be too obnoxious about it. So here's what they shared. In this era, it's exciting because there's a lot of different people that are flying around. For us, anybody that we bring in, like Fennec, like Saul, like Rex, what we talk about is, what makes the most sense for our characters? What's going to service our story and the arcs of our characters as they move forward? It's fun playing with the action figures, but we just don't want to have it to be throw all the figures in and let's play around with it. So we want to make sure any time we have legacy character that it's really well earned and that we give it the due that it deserves. That being said, without going into details, there are other cameos that we are excited to see. I don't think so far there's been any obnoxious cameos besides Caleb. And that's only because they just jacked up the cannon. Um, I'm gonna let it go eventually, I swear. So besides the cameos we know are going to happen, I'm, I'm really hoping they pull some really big ones on us that just take everyone by surprise. You know what would be absolutely great, but you know 100% isn't going to happen if Crosshair is able to talk some more of the Bad Badge to joining the Empire. He's like, hey, they have all these health benefits, and the pay is great, and oh man, you get this spacious quarter on like this awesome orbital uh, peacekeeping station. You get to go to exotic locations. It is the best, and you guys need to come over. And then, you know, like maybe text like, hey, all right. And the series ends with them all actually just being besties and joining the Empire and serving Palpatine loyally. That would be the, the happiest ending. Okay, that is your Bad Batch uh, news update. Like, subscribe. I am reviewing the Bad Batch episodes every Friday, but sometimes I don't get the review out till Saturday because I work a lot and I'm really busy and I'm really sorry about that. But I also love my job, so...